Well, good morning everyone and welcome to our worship for the 30th of April. This service is focusing on the theme of influencers and we're going to look at a very familiar passage from John's Gospel this morning where Jesus tells the disciples and tells the crowds that he is the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. And we're going to explore together what that might have to say to us uh, as we seek to listen for God's voice and as we seek to do his will in our daily lives. This service will be uh, delivered live um, at Hampton Park in Hereford. Um, and uh, it's primarily for those people who are unable to gather for an in-person worship. However, it doesn't matter. You are all welcome to worship with me uh, in this online way. And I pray that this service would be a blessing to us all as we seek to do God's will in our daily lives. Let's worship God together. A call to worship says these words to us. Come, let's raise our voices in worship, knowing that God hears and God knows us. Come, let's listen and hear Jesus' voice through our wrestling with scripture and in our worship today. Let us pray a gathering prayer as we begin. Loving Lord, there are many sounds around us, lots of voices making lots of noise. Help us to hear your voice of encouragement, of challenge, of peace and comfort and joy as you speak into our hearts today. Amen. So we're going to sing our first hymn together. Lord God, your love has called us here. When I was preparing this act of worship, um, I couldn't find um, a recorded version of this song with, with someone singing. So you're going to have to join in with the singing this morning as we sing together, Lord God, your love has called us here. You are the choir this morning. Um, but we, are, we, and we do have an accompaniment for this great hymn. So let's now come before God and sing together.
now we continue in worship as we offer our prayers of adoration and confession. Let's pray. O oh, good shepherd, you lead us through the valleys and up to the mountains. You guide us through the trials and tribulations of life with your steadfast love and unwavering devotion. Your wisdom and grace guide us through the darkness and your light shines brightly, illuminating our path. We praise you for your goodness and mercy that follow us all the days of our lives. Thank you, O Good Shepherd, for your faithful love and care for us. You have provided for our every need and you have never abandoned us in our times of need. You have brought us to green pastures and still waters and you have restored our souls. We give thanks for the gift of your presence and the assurance of your protection. We are grateful for your grace and mercy and we praise you for your goodness and love. May we always trust in your care and follow your lead. Forgive us, O oh Good Shepherd, for the times we have strayed from your path. We confess that we have been like lost sheep, wandering aimlessly without your guidance. We have followed our own desires, disregarding your loving commands. We have failed to recognise your voice and have instead followed the voice of the world. We ask for your forgiveness and the strength to follow your lead. And in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 6 to 8 we hear these words of assurance. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. For by the blood of Christ we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God which he gave to us in such large measure. May those words ring true for us this morning. And may we know in our hearts that we have been forgiven. That God has taken everything that weighs us down and does enable us to begin again. And in Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. And we gather all our prayers together, praying the prayer that Jesus has taught all his disciples to pray. Praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This morning's reading is taking us on a different tack from where we've been over the past few weeks. We've been looking um, since Easter at the resurrection appearances of Jesus. There's been the uh, encounter that Thomas has with Jesus in the upstairs room um, and he has the opportunity, doesn't he, to explore what the resurrection actually has meant for him and for the disciples. And then last week we had that familiar story of Jesus' walk with his disciples to Emmaus, two of his disciples to Emmaus. And we heard of how uh, the disciples' hearts burned within them as he walked with them on the road and he opened the scriptures to them. This week's readings take a slightly different tack. And actually, this Sunday is known as the Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, and we're looking together at what Jesus says about himself being the Good Shepherd and saying that those sheep who hear his voice will follow after him and find good pasture, will come safely in and out 
and find good pasture. And I thought to myself, let's see how good we are at uh, under uh, knowing particular voices, familiar voices to us. We will obviously know the voice of our parents. We would know the voice of particular friends uh, and family members. But I wonder if we would know uh, the voices of particular familiar people um, in our world today. So I thought we'd play a game um, and we would play the game called The Voice and we'll see how good we are at responding to uh, the voices that we hear. I've got a computer on the uh, right hand side of me um, which is why I just moved across and um, I'm going to uh, to just play a series of eight of six voices and I'll see how many of them you can get. So let's watch, let's listen to this voice, these voices now. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream. No, sure. Before we move on to the next voice, um, I wonder if you guessed who that was. Um, that was Martin Luther King Jr., if you didn't know. Um, and it, um, it, um, it was the moment where he delivered his great I Have a Dream speech. I think he's one of the most influential people of the 21st, 20th century um, because of what he did in, 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 in the cause of providing civil rights to black African Americans. Um, but his voice is so powerful and his words are so powerful too. You've begun to hear the next one. Let's see if you know who this is. The might of the enemy must very soon be turned on us. Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be free, and the light of the world may move forward into broad, sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister and perhaps more protracted by the lights of perverted silence. Let us, therefore, brace ourselves to our duties. So I wonder who, you, who, um, who that was. I'm sure you all know who that is. That is Winston Churchill. Um, and that obviously was during 1940 uh, when uh, Britain was faced um, with invasion from Germany. Let's listen to the next one and see how we get on. That means fighting against the burning injustice that if you're born poor you will die on average nine years earlier than others. If you're black you're treated more harshly by the criminal justice system than if you're white. If you're a white working class boy, you're less likely than anybody else in Britain to go to university. If you're at a state school, you're less likely to reach the top professions than if you're educated privately. If you're a woman, you will earn less than a man. If you suffer from mental health problems, there's not enough help to hand. If you're young, you'll find it harder than ever before to own your own home. I wonder... If you knew who that was, I'm sure you did. That was Theresa May uh, in her acceptance speech as uh, the Prime Minister in 2017. Um, so, this is the next, this is the next one. And I have been elected as leader of my party and your Prime Minister, in part, to fix them. And that work begins immediately. I will place economic stability and confidence at the heart 
of this government's agenda. Wonder who that is. I'm sure you all know that that is our current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Let's try another one. This will mean oh. difficult decisions to come. But you saw me during COVID doing everything I could to protect people and businesses with schemes like furlough. There are always limits, more so now than ever. But I promise you this, I will bring that same compassion to the challenges we face today. I'm honoured to take on this responsibility at a vital time for our country. What makes the United Kingdom great is our fundamental belief in freedom, in enterprise and in fair play. Our people have shown grit, courage and determination time and time again. We now face severe global headwinds caused by Russia's appalling war in Ukraine and the aftermath of Covid. I'm sure you all know that voice as the shortest serving Prime Minister in our nation's history. That was Liz Truss. And there is one more final one. Let us all together thank God for this beautiful occasion where we can all together proclaim the joy of spreading peace. The joy of loving one another and the joy acknowledging that the poorest of the poor are our brothers and sisters. So, I wonder if you knew who that last voice was. That was Mother Teresa. Interestingly, our voices are often our identity. I don't know if you've come across that, but uh, technology now uh, enables us to use our own voice as a password for anything that is needing to be protected. So if you phone HMRC or you phone the Department of Work and Pensions, we'll often ask you if you want to make your voice a, a, a password, because there is something unique about our voices. And I think it's important that we remember that there is something unique about the voice of our Lord and Saviour Jesus, who, as our Good Shepherd, calls us into relationship with God and does indeed lead us into rich and fertile land and good land for us to live in his presence and experience life in all its fullness. And that's what we're going to explore later in our service. So for the moment, just hold on to that idea about the uniqueness of our voices and how our voice can influence other people. Amen. So we're going to continue in worship now as we sing together, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Alleluia. Let's sing together.
And now we're going to listen to our reading from John's Gospel, chapter 10, and reading from verses 1 to 10. And this is where Jesus uh, tells his disciples and the crowds, as I've said earlier, uh, that he is the good shepherd. So let's now listen for the word of God. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person, because they do not know his voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he meant. So Jesus said again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All others who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever comes in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life, life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And following on from that reading, the following meditation is based on Psalm 23, but is a reminder to us that God is our good shepherd. So this is entitled as a meditation, I met him out on the hills, and this is written by Nick Fawcett. I met him out on the hills, night drawing in, the wind chill, a solid, a solitary shepherd, brow furrowed, searching for a sheep gone astray. And suddenly it all came flooding back. Those long hours I had spent as a boy, out in the fields tending my father's flock. Good days on the whole. Time to think, to pray, or simply to enjoy the beauty of this world God has given. But demanding also. Even dangerous sometimes. Out in the fiercest of storms, harassed by wild beasts, keeping watch through the lonely hours of the night. Funny really, isn't it? All that over a bunch of sheep. For let's face it, they're really stupid creatures at the best of times, often driving you to near distraction. You try to help them, and what do they do? Wander away as soon as look at you. You try to protect them, but half a chance and they're off again, straight into the teeth of danger. Infuriating. Yet somehow a bond develops between you. Until the time comes when, if you're worth your salt, you'll do anything for those sheep. Even risk your own life to save their necks. You think that's strange? You shouldn't. For we're like sheep ourselves, always as foolish, headstrong and maddening as any of them. Following the crowd, ignoring the guidance, careering blindly towards catastrophe. Why should anyone bother with us? And yet the Lord does just that. Like a shepherd, always there to guard us, guide us, feed us. Seeking when we're lost, rejoicing when we're found, protecting us from evil, meeting our every need. Would he risk our life for us, as I for my sheep? Sounds ridiculous, I know. 
too fanciful for words. And yet, when I consider the extent of his love, the care he really shows each day, I really believe that he would. That not only would he risk his life, but if necessary, he'd give it freely and gladly, willing to die for us so that we might live. May God add his blessing to that little meditation. Amen. And in response to what we've heard, we and as we prepare to reflect further on what all of those words might have to say to us, we sing together in heavenly love abiding. One of the things that has changed the face of the world is the rise of social media. In the last 20 years, we have seen people's use of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok and many other digital platforms besides skyrocket. And the majority of people in the West today use social media as a way of connecting and keeping in touch with each other. Now, such is the power of social media that some people even live out their entire lives in cyberspace and they will relay what they are doing to their followers in minute detail, from telling the world what they had for breakfast to what they are wearing currently to even how they are feeling. And their followers respond to them. I hasten to add, I don't get social media at all. In fact, I spend most of my time trying to avoid social media in order that I don't need to, to worry about what the world might be saying. And I only have a Facebook account in order that I can 
keep connected with perhaps other URC ministers and family members and a few friends. And I will use Facebook Messenger to directly contact people that I need to. But apart from that, social media doesn't really impact my life. Other than that, I think social media is a waste of time. And I frequently have rants that people should get a life rather than wasting it online. Now, my son thinks my attitude to social media is hilarious and has often threatened to record my rants about social media and then post them as videos on TikTok. He seems to think that people will be interested in that rubbish. Perhaps he's right. After all, I do know that people watch all sorts of pointless videos on social media rather than getting on with their daily lives. I know that people will spend hours watching other people playing computer games or watching them paint their living room or watch them writing letters or cooking a meal. Now that last one I can understand because if the video is of a professional cook showing you how to cook a particular meal that has particular careful preparations and you want to cook that meal yourself, it's important that you do learn from an expert. But for me, the other things really are just a waste of time. And for me, are just an excuse to procrastinate. Anyway, I digress. To come back to social media, one of the things that I have noticed in recent years and discovered in recent years is that there are people who identify on social media as influencers. They get paid to wear particular fashions or go to particular restaurants or use particular technologies or support particular political or social causes. And because they have so many followers on their account, they actually do influence other people to do what they are doing or to desire what they have or to think as they think. Now, to me, it's all very fake because you know in reality that the social media influencer doesn't really care about what they are wearing or where they're eating or what political or social cause they're supporting because the reality is that they're just getting paid to say or do whatever it is. But their influence is so vast that it leads people to adopt a particular lifestyle or fashion trend. My own personal view is that people should have independent thought and it seems to me such a waste of time and energy. But clearly my views are a minority. Anyway, what does all of that have to do with our reading from John's Gospel? Well, I think that in the same way as people listen to the voice of social media influences, when we really tune in as followers of Jesus, we can listen to his voice and be influenced by him as our good shepherd. One of the things that our reading from John highlights is who Jesus is and where he's come from. Now, John's Gospel explores a number of I am sayings of Jesus, of which the Good Shepherd and the Gate are but two. We need to remind ourselves where I am comes from. It comes from Exodus chapter 3, where Moses meets with God in the burning bush. You'll recall that, that Moses is tending the sheep of his father Jethro, in, um, who's the priest of Midian, in the, uh, in the desert lands. And he comes to Sinai and the Lord meets with him out of the burning bush. And, 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 and Moses is so taken by what he sees that he goes over to, to, to witness the burning bush and then God speaks to him. And he tells him about the fact that he's come down because he's seen the oppression of the people of Israel in Egypt where they have been enslaved. And he says he's come down to rescue them. And he goes on, um, God says, to say that he is sending Moses 
to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go free. And Moses immediately responds with, who am I to go to Pharaoh? And in fact, who are they going to actually listen to? Because who is it that is sending me to Pharaoh to let the people go free? They'll never listen to me. Who are you, Lord? And God says, I am the God of your father, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. And now go and I'll be with you. And Moses still demands a name from God. And God says, I am who I am. Or I will be who I will be. And in John's Gospel, John is picking up this theme that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the new and is renewing his covenant with his people. I am has been sent to you. And Jesus is being is being compared to the I am of God because John is saying that Jesus has come from God and is the same as God. So as John explores a number of different I am sayings in his gospel, so Jesus is saying, I am who I am, or I will be who I will be. This is the divine name that Jesus is using. And the Good Shepherd and the Gate are but two of the I am sayings in, in John's gospel. Prior to this teaching, Jesus has already declared himself to be the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. And he says, I am the bread of life. He also says, I am the water of life. And in a series of miracles and teaching that goes alongside those sayings, Jesus calls people to recognise who he is. Now, if we read on in John, we will hear Jesus saying that he is the resurrection and the life. And when he raises Lazarus from the dead, he also goes on to say that those who believe in him will receive eternal life. You see, the I am saying as a type is, is, is acting almost as a type of social media influencing, demonstrating the way in which followers of Jesus should respond to him. And the saying, I am the good shepherd and I am the gate, are significant declarations of Jesus that we need to pay attention to. In the Old Testament, God passes judgment on the shepherds of Israel and says that he himself will provide a sheep who will a shepherd who will lead the people of God back into the right relationship with him. We hear God speaking that judgment in Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 7 to 10. In Ezekiel 34 he says this, now you shepherds listen to what I the Lord am telling you. As surely as I am the living God, you had better listen to me. My sheep have been attacked by wild animals that killed and ate them because there was no shepherd. My shepherds did not try to find the sheep. They were taking care of themselves and not the sheep. So listen to me, you shepherds. I, the sovereign Lord, declare that I am your enemy. I will take my sheep away from you and never again let you be their shepherds. Never again will I let you take care only of yourselves. I will rescue my sheep from you and not let you eat them. That's quite a shocking indictment, isn't it, of God on the shepherds of Israel. But God goes on to say that he will be the good shepherd of the sheep and will gather those who have been scattered and draw them back to himself. And in John chapter 10, Jesus is declaring that that prophecy has now been fulfilled and that he has come to lead the people of God back into the right relationship with God. And added to that, Jesus isn't saying he is a prophet through whom God is speaking. He is declaring he is God himself and that those who hear his voice 
respond to it as, as if they were speaking and responding to God. To bring us back to the I am, who I am, what I will be, what I will be saying from Exodus. That's what is being declared here. One of the things that we have to understand about the context of this teaching is that Jesus is speaking into a sheep farming context where the bond between the shepherd and the sheep was based on trust alone. This is not a context like ours, where the bond of trust is between the sheepdog and the shepherd, and the sheepdog does its master's bidding in rounding up the sheep. Instead, in this context, the shepherd has built up such a bond of trust with their sheep that when they call them, the sheep instinctively know their master's voice and they follow after him. We believe that sheep are stupid and wander off on their own. But if you have nurtured and formed a relationship with sheep individually, over time they will trust you. And this was the shepherding method used in the first century. And the first hearers of these words of Jesus would have been able easily to associate them with that image of sheep following after their identified master. That's what's so tragic about the parable of the lost sheep in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. The shepherd, as we'll recall, has a hundred sheep who respond to his voice. But in the parable, when one sheep gets lost, the shepherd rushes off to find it because it's a tragedy that it doesn't respond when the shepherd calls. It's like the loss of a family member. And that is why there is such great rejoicing when the shepherd finds the sheep, brings it home on its shoulder or on his shoulders. You see, context is everything. And Jesus comparing his followers to sheep who hear his voice and follow after him would not be lost on those first hearers. Perhaps we need to bring this teaching up to date and ask ourselves what example Jesus would use in 2023 that would enable his followers to respond to his voice. I think that question brings us back to the power of social media influencers. Perhaps Jesus would be saying of himself today, I am the good social media influencer. Those who listen to my voice and follow my social media trends will receive life as God always intended it through me. Of course, one of the biggest challenges of social media is knowing whose influence and trends we should trust. And there are many people that we should seek to avoid. But Jesus highlights the need to be cautious in his teaching about being the good shepherd too. He says, there have been many who have gone before him claiming to speak for God, but in reality have simply come to steal, to kill and destroy. Jesus says these people need to be avoided. And like a social media influencer whose advice seems to demand unrealistic things of a person or saying things that are unsubstantiated, we need to exercise caution and only listen to the voice of the one who gives life in all its fullness. At the end of this section of John's Gospel, Jesus declares that he has come in order that we might have life and have it abundantly. And when we respond to his voice, we find that life and offer it to others as we follow after our good shepherd. Amen. In response to what we've heard, we're going to sing together, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. We're going to sing the crimmoned version of this hymn. Let's sing together.
And now we're going to continue in worship as we offer our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today to offer our prayers of intercession on the theme of the Good Shepherd. Pray for all those who were lost or wandering in their lives, that they may be found and guided by the loving care of our Good Shepherd. Pray for those who are experiencing fear or uncertainty, that they may feel the comfort of your presence and the protection of the Good Shepherd. May your Holy Spirit surround them and bring peace to their lives. Pray for those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, that they may find healing and restoration through the care and compassion of the Good Shepherd. May your love and grace flow through them, bringing comfort and strength in their time of need. We pray for those who are in positions of leadership and responsibility, that they may be guided by the wisdom and compassion of the Good Shepherd. May they use their power and authority to serve others and to bring about your kingdom on earth. Pray for those who are working in ministry and service to others, that they may be sustained by the love and support of the Good Shepherd. May their efforts be blessed and their work be fruitful, bringing hope and joy to those they serve. Finally, we offer a prayer of gratitude for the constant care and protection that we receive from the Good Shepherd. May we always remain faithful to your call and may we always be willing to follow your lead wherever it takes us. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And we close our worship as we sing together, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. Let's sing together.
And now a final prayer and then a blessing. As we leave this place, go with us and guide us through the coming days. Protect us from harm and help us to hear your voice. Create opportunities for us to share your love with those we meet. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and with all who we love and who we pray for this day and forever. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining with me in this act of worship. I hope it's been a blessing to you and that you have felt encouraged and embraced by the Good Shepherd. I pray that you would have a blessed rest of your day and I will see you very soon. So for now, take care everyone and God bless. <laughs>